Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. Today, big news all across the world. We're seeing HSBC, Standard Chartered, Deutsche Bank, even big banks like JP Morgan included on a list of banks that have been conducting fraudulent activity, suspicious activity over the last almost 10 years or so. This was announced in a report from the US Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, which is part of the US Treasury. And as a result, we're seeing stocks plummet. We're seeing stocks plummet big time. Standard Chartered in London just opened just a few minutes ago. Stocks already down 3%. HSBC in London just opened 3.3%. Deutsche Bank in Germany has not opened yet. JP Morgan in US has not opened yet, but stocks are probably gonna tank. What is this news? How bad is it? And what should you do with your portfolio of bank stocks? Today, I'm gonna try to answer all these questions in about 10 to 15 minutes. For those of you new viewers and subscribers, my name is Dan. I'm a former Wall Street guy, former hedge fund guy. I traveled the world and came back to Tokyo, Japan recently. Just started YouTube this year, brand new. Just started this channel you're watching right now, only a few months ago. Started the Japanese channel a little bit earlier this year. I got a lot more subscribers there, but just started this English channel. Definitely want to focus on the English channel too. So would very much appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and follow me going forward. Today's theme, I want to break down into three main topics. Number one, what the heck is this news? What is FinCEN? What was announced? Let's go over the details. Let's go over the history. What is actually being announced all over the world right now? This massive, massive banking, uh, suspicious, fraudulent activity that's been going on. Number two, let's look at the charts. How bad is it? How bad was today's movement? It markets just open, but we'll go into further detail and I'll show you how to analyze this and how bad is it looking going forward. Number three, I want to tell you what I think you should do with your portfolio, whether it's short term or long term with these bank stocks and not just these bank stocks, but how will this imply for uh, bank stocks in Japan and also the US? So let's get started here. First and foremost, what is this news? Uh, we're seeing this reported all over CNBC, BBC, uh, all sorts of news stations. Basically, what was announced was uh, a report was uh, leaked from the U.S. Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. It's called FinCEN between 2000 and 2017. So this is going all the way back to uh, about 10 years ago. And uh, we're covering about transactions worth about $2 trillion uh, that have been reported. And this was actually leaked by uh, BuzzFeed, a website, and Consortium of Investigative Journalists, IC, uh, ICIJ. Now, this was leaked, and this is showing basically uh, uh, FinCEN files leaks about 2,657 documents, at the heart of which are about 2,100 hundred suspicious activity reports called SARS. Now, these have been reported and what's interesting to know is a lot of the banks that are being highlighted are HSBC, Standard Chartered, and Deutsche Bank. Especially Deutsche Bank is really topping the list. Banks with the most suspicious transactions and leaked files. During this time frame, we're seeing uh, going all the way back to 1999, it says Deutsche Bank was a huge amount, all, all more than half. Then we're actually seeing JP Morgan, Standard Chartered Bank, New York Mellon, Barclays Society, and HSBC. SBC all being reported now basically this is a report guys saying that uh, it's it's a it's, it's a suspicious activities report SAR that's what it stands for now banks across the world they are mandated by law that when they see an activity that they think that they just feel is wrong they are supposed to report it and it's sort of a broad well it's specific but it's also broad mandates on what they consider uh suspicious activity now uh they report this and uh they're supposed to report this to the regulation authorities and the regulation authorities are supposed to conduct an analysis based on the bank's report so it's up to the banks to report this now what was reported and leaked by this is showing that over the last 10 years or so these banks such as hsbc uh jp morgan etc cetera, etc cetera, have been uh you know conducting uh financial transactions on the behalf of institutions that have not been uh, so uh, let's say honest uh, notably note one big one is a Ponzi scam that was announced and caught uh, between 2013 and 2014 uh, this is a big Ponzi scam that was done uh, by a Chinese citizen called Ming Zhu uh, in California he called himself Dr. Phil and he had a Ponzi scam running about called WCM 777 sounds like a the name of like an airplane or something like that but he did this in in 2013 it was a ponzi scam and uh he was caught and obviously this uh, his all his accounts were shut down and hsbc did 
uh, report this to authorities. Now, this has been done over a number of years. This Ponzi scam actually was done over 2013 and then 2014 and also through uh, so some of other years. Basically, guys, a Ponzi scam is when there's a scheme owner and he keeps collecting money. And with new money collected, he gives it out to old investors saying this is your return. So there's actually no return. He just keeps collecting money endlessly. Now, this leak also found that it wasn't just HSBC, but it was other banks too. JP Morgan running money through the financial system for big mafia bosses in Russia, such as Semya Mogledvich. I don't know if I said that correctly. Uh, also, also, lots of other reports going on about how, you know, Deutsche Bank was also uh, in, in, involved in a lot of other uh, suspicious activities as well. Uh, tons and tons of banks were reported. But guys, what I want you to note is, according to the articles I've read, most of these fraudulent activities were reported successfully by the governments, uh, sorry, by the banks to the governments, and they came to financial resolutions. Uh, well, you can see here that especially Deutsche Bank, which is being really hammered hard, they said in a statement that incidents leaked in the documents have already been investigated and led to regulatory resolutions. So a lot of these suspicious activities, actually, they were previously reported by these banks and they have been dealt with. Now, some of them were uh, a lot of the details were not announced to the public. This is why it's being all over the news today. Uh, this FinCEN report was leaked. And as a result, we're seeing a lot of these companies uh hsbc uh london uh, standard chart etc the bank stocks are falling hard but do note guys that a lot of this was actually already reported and they've actually already been dealt with so this is what i really want you to cover with today that a lot of this news it is heavy news and the markets will react to this because it doesn't look good and it's probably going to lead to more politicians and authorities to say we need to clamp down on tighter security for banks and it's probably going to happen so that's not going to be good for stock prices but do note that a lot of this news that was out has already been dealt with financially and in, re in a regulatory fashion okay so now that you know what this news is about let's actually go to number two what's going on with the stock prices here so in terms of stock prices guys uh you know it's still very early on today right now it's the 21st in japan time right now so it's the 21st right now currently in london time it just opened it's about 8 uh, 20 p.m. Uh, sorry, 20 a.m. London time. So a lot of these stocks have just opened. So it's still a little bit early, but we are seeing here that HSBC, uh, we're seeing the stock down about 3.46%. We're seeing stocks down in Standard Chartered down about 3.38%. And we're seeing that Deutsche Bank, obviously the markets are not open yet. And US markets are not open yet. So we don't know how JP Morgan is gonna react. But let's look at the charts here. And what I want you guys to note is when you're looking at the charts, actually some of these big bank stocks like HSBC, SPC and Standard Chartered, they actually also trade in Hong Kong. Uh, these are stocks, a lot of these, they have what's called DRs, Depository Retreats. Now, sometimes you may have heard of what's called an ADR. That means it's an American Depository Retreat. It's a foreign company that they list their stock in wherever foreign country branch that they're denominated in but they also list it in the u.s maybe traded on the new york stock exchange or on the otc such as nasdaq etc and investors can buy stock of the same company on multiple exchanges these are often called drs or depository receipts now in hong kong these big banks that today were all over the news hsbc and standard charter were actually trading in hong kong time and we can see right now here that they were down quite a bit uh h you know we're seeing hsbc this is symbol number five was down today 4.2 percent standard charter today was down 5.1 percent in hong kong time so these were quite big movements and the charts let's take a look really quickly here it overall does not look so pretty now guys when i'm looking at the charts and you don't understand the lingo that i'm talking about please review the uh, videos below in my description area so you can get an idea about rsi macd bollinger band also guys if you don't understand the basic of investing Please see some of the videos below on long term, short term, sharp ratio. So you may get a probably better idea of what I'm talking about. And it's probably a better use of your time as well. So getting right into these charts here, for example, let's look at for a standard chartered, right? Standard chartered is having a uh, another down move today. The chart's not looking good, but let's do a little bit more further analysis here. 
Uh, MACD we're seeing right here, it is in a crisscross. It's going in a downward fashion. Uh, RSI is also in a downward fashion here. Not only is it going in a downward trend, but it's a sort of downward sloping uh, lower highs here. So that's not a good indicator either. Stochastics is also showing across here at the moment. Volume was quite big here, uh, you know, the day before. So knowing that there was already selling pressure in Standard Chartered before this news was leaked today. Uh, otherwise, we see here that, uh, you know, during Hong Kong hours as well, Standard Chartered was also quite heavy in volume today. Uh, actually, not as heavy, though, compared to some of the other stocks listed. Uh, sorry, some of the other days previously in Standard Chartered. Now, looking at actually, let's look at HSBC now. HSBC, you know, looking at also in Hong Kong time, quite heavy pressure here. Now, let's also look at HSBC during uh, London time as well, because London time is that's actually where more stocks more usually more stock will trade uh, during uh, London time. So looking at HSBC during the uh, ordinary hours here, we're seeing it's down around 4% right now. HSBC stock, this volume so far, it's hard to tell how much, you know, the stock just opened. So it's going to be hard to tell how big this volume is going to be. But we're also seeing the MACD is going down, our size going down. Things are indicating overall down. Deutsche Bank, Germany. Uh, markets aren't open yet, but let's just look at the charts here. Overall, uh, again, this is not showing a very good indicator. Oh, it actually looks like Deutsche Bank may have just opened right now at the moment. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's it's overall showing the same charts. The charts are going down. The trend is down at the moment. So most of these charts are not looking very good on a short term basis. And if we zoom out here, some of these charts here, let's say Deutsche Bank, uh, Standard and Chartered. Now, standard and charter, this does not look pretty at all. It went down during the coronavirus crash. It hasn't even covered. Now it's breaking lows. That's not good at all. Uh, looking at HSBC here, also just going straight down after the coronavirus crash, and it's breaking new lows. So none of this looks very good here. Uh, Deutsche Bank in a very different situation. Deutsche Bank has recovered a lot from the coronavirus crash, but now, but it you know it seems like this chart overall. Even though it's not breaking lows, it seems to me that it's making sort of a downward trend fashion here. Uh, and this to me indicates that this looks a little bit dangerous, like it's going to keep breaking lows. So, OK, listening to this, I sound very gloomy now. What should you do with your portfolio? What is my thought process on what you should do with your stocks, especially if you own U.S. banks or let's say you own Japanese banks, what should you do with your portfolio regarding this news? Uh, I'll give you my thoughts. First and foremost, guys, investing is and always will be self-responsibility. So please note, guys, I'm one YouTuber, one person, one suggestion, one brain. Please check with other people. And at the end of the day, uh, please make your own judgments. That's always my biggest recommendation is don't rely too much on other people. Try to come up with your own analysis. And again, guys, just as a review, please see my videos below previous videos. But I recommend long term investments, 70, 90 percent of your net worth divided up this way and 30 to 10 percent of your investment divided up for short term investing to catch trends. Do both long term and short term to increase your sharp ratio. Again, guys, see my previous videos below if you don't know what I'm talking talking about what is my recommendation on what you should do with these bank stocks now the big question is looking at all this red here you're wondering oh my god are u.s bank stocks also going to go down are japanese bank stocks also going to go down now to do this i think you have to do what's called a correlation analysis and correlation analysis is basically showing how uh correlated are uh these stocks with u.s bank stocks and japanese bank stocks so let's first look at for example U.S. bank stocks, and I'm just going to use as the base benchmark XLF, which is the main ETF for U.S. bank stocks. Now, using this, this red indicator shows correlation, indicating one this is a perfect correlation and, and negative one, which is a perfect negative correlation, meaning it goes completely in the opposite direction. Now, looking at some of these big stocks here that we're looking at, for example, standard chartered here. OK, so the correlation is only a little bit here. It's about 0 0.3. So it's not that big. Deutsche Bank about 0 0.5 so it's a little bit higher uh let's go into something else like let's say for example uh hsbc or uh barclays let's say some of these other british banks here just to get a better look at how things are moving hmm okay let's look at also hsbc here hsbc let's adding in here uh hsbc during uh local hours here we're seeing here hsbc Okay, also about 0 0.5. So it seems that if these European banks go down, 
Right now, the correlation is about 0.5, meaning that according to this analysis, if these stocks are falling about 4%, 3%, something like that, then the U.S. bank stocks in general, according to if this correlation is correct, may fall about half that amount, maybe. And now let's look at the Japanese bank stocks. The Japanese bank stocks, on the other hand, what's interesting is that uh, if we look at the correlation from what I found, it's actually a lot lower. That's right. Uh, they don't really move that much with these European bank stocks. If you take a look here at this correlation here, right now I'm using as the benchmark the Japanese bank stock ETF. I'm using 1615. Uh, this is the Tokyo Stock Exchange bank stocks ETF managed by Nomura. Uh, oh, sorry guys here. The symbol seems like it's not quite working. So let's here. This is a good example. I could show you how this chart actually analysis works. So I'll put in here 1615 and you can see here here according to trading view this is how you put in your basis for correlation of how you want to ma measure a security versus something now we use 1615 as the benchmark and we measure this versus let's say standard and chartered look at this negative correlation it's not even moving in the same direction recently deutsche bank not even moving in the same direction either it's negative which is very interesting let's add hsbc as well here HSBC, let's go to the ORDS. The local, what I say ORDS, which means local. And this is also negative. This indicates to me, my opinion is, if you own Japanese banks, don't worry about this. I don't think it's going to impact the Japanese bank stock prices that much. If you own US banks, it will probably impact the price a little bit. But according to most analysis that I've seen here, all of this news has already been dealt with for the most part it's already been investigated and led to regulatory resolutions so i think this is a short-term sort of a bump in the road for the overall sector uh, and u.s banks and japanese banks overall i'd say that this news is probably not that relevant continue to move on with whatever strategies you've had on so far i've been recommending to buy short term both u.s banks and japanese banks and hedge with let's say the uh nasdaq qqq short selling the high tech stocks there keeping a ratio just because volatility is a little bit high i continue to recommend that and i don't think you should uh worry too much about this news going forward so that's my conclusion Thanks so much, guys, for watching my video. Hopefully you enjoyed the content. Please subscribe to my channel below. Also, guys, looking forward to your comments and suggestions on uh, video content, anything regarding the video. Let me know what you guys want to hear, and I will try to fit it into the program. Thanks so much, guys. Hope you have a great week. Have a great day. Stay hydrated. Stay safe. Wear your masks. Adios, everyone. Have a great day.